Hi, I'm Wes Hardiker from the DNSSEC Tools Project. Today I'm going to teach you how to get started with DNS security, otherwise known as DNSSEC. Specifically, I'm going to teach you, a potential zone owner, how to sign your zone. Many people assume that DNSSEC is complex and hard to get started with. I will show you that this is not true and it's actually quite easy to get going. So that's our first goal for this lesson. I'm going to show you how to sign a simple zone. By doing this, I'm going to demonstrate how easy it is to get started with DNSSEC. First, let's look at our example zone file. I've called it example.com. As you can see, this zone file is extremely simple. It contains just a few records, almost the bare minimum number, in fact. It contains an SOA record, a name server record, and an A record for www.example.com. Next, let's discuss what it means to sign your zone with DNSSEC in the first place. DNSSEC provides origin authentication of DNS data. This is a fancy way of saying a few important things. First, the DNS data is cryptographically signed. Second, because of this signing, you can say with confidence that if the signed DNS data is altered in any way, it is possible to detect that an alteration has taken place. Now, cryptography is hard. Let's face it. If you had to do it all in your head, you wouldn't, or more likely you couldn't. It takes some nasty math and some very big numbers and a lot of repetition. But that's exactly what computers are good at. And because of this, you shouldn't need to worry too much about the details. It's definitely beneficial if you can understand what's happening underneath the cryptographic hood, but it shouldn't, let you, it shouldn't stop you from deploying DNSSEC even if you don't understand the nitty-gritty details. Zone Signer is a tool from the DNSSEC Tools Project that makes, it, makes signing your zone very, very simple. When Zone Signer is run the first time, you'll need to ask it to generate some cryptographic keys for you. We do this with the Gen Keys command line option. This is the only option you need, unless you want to change any number of the various parameters that are available. But we feel that the defaults are likely to be acceptable for you and have chosen them carefully. I'm going to run Zone Center on the input DNS file of example.com. As you can see, Zone Signer spits out a bunch of output. Most of this is informational, and you don't need to pay very close attention to it. However, I'll highlight a few important pieces of the output that you may want to pay attention to. First off, notice that it has told us that it is generating some key pairs. In fact, it's generated three key pairs, and later on it tells us some details about them. It says it's generated one key signing key and two zone signing key keys, one which is active and one which is in standby mode. And then finally, at the bottom, there's a signature expiration time. An important element of DNSSEC is that the zone data must be re-signed on a regular basis. This ending line shows you exactly how long you have until the timestamp on the signatures expire. The most complex thing you'll need to do is to remember to re-sign your zone before that timestamp expires. Fortunately, Zone Signer makes this quite easy. You simply run it again, this time without the Gen Keys option. And there, my zone is re-signed. It's that simple. And when we need to modify the data, we simply modify the original source file and re-sign. For example, I can add a www2 record. And then I re-sign the zone. Oops, I forgot to increment the serial number. Replace it with 2. Now, fortunately, Zone Signer actually takes care of serial number incrementing and makes sure that whenever it signs a zone, there's always one number added to the serial number at a minimum. Now, let's take a look at this created zone file. We will notice that a lot of extra data has been added to this file. All of the seemingly randomly jumble of characters is actually the cryptographic keys and signatures. But don't worry, our original data is still in this file. For example, here is the original dns.example.com A record for 127.0.0.1. This is the file that you should now serve from your name server. Anytime you make modifications, as we did above, or remembering to re-sign your zone when using Zone Signer when you need to, then you can then update the name server with the contents of this file. 
Now, let's look at some of the other files in the directory. As you can see, a number of files generated were generated during the zone, zone signing process. Although you don't necessarily need to understand the nitty-gritty details of these files, you do need to make sure that you keep them around. First, there are a number of key files that were generated. These all start with a capital K. It is very important that you protect your zone data and the keys so that they can't be used or edited by somebody else. Second, you should know that there is a file that begins with dsset. This file contains DS records that you will need to give to your zone's parent to publish. They are what enables people on the internet to start from the root key and validate the whole DNS authority chain down to the records in your zone file, like www.example.com. In my case, I would want to give these records to the .com registry, since example.com is a subdomain of the .com domain. Many registrars now support, a D support DS record input fields suitable for uploading these records using a simple web form. All of these files that are generated, that are created during the signing process, contain lots of technical details that are designed to be read primarily by computers that can make, it, make them hard to interpret by humans. That's why we've created another tool to help you understand the important elements of the files without needing to understand the nitty-gritty details of the files themselves. First off, let me show you what the inside of the DS record example looks like. These are actually the exact records that your parent would need to publish. The rest of the files, for example, the key files, contain lots of interesting information that, again, as I said, uh, you could look at yourself or you can use our tool. Our next tool is called lsdnssec. When run in a directory containing DNSSEC files, lsdnssec will collect as much information as it can find about these files and display the results in a useful way. lsdnssec displays a number of interesting things about the keys used to sign your zone. Specifically, it lists each key and includes with it a timeline showing you how long you have until you should generate new keys and change them using a process called rolling your keys, which we'll discuss how to do in a later video. Zone signers defaults assume that you want a key signing lifetime of one year and a zone signing lifetime of three months. However, there is nothing wrong with using these keys for longer than these time lengths, or less if you would rather. It is important to note that these ages are related to the keys and how old they are. They are not an indication of how frequently you need to re-sign your zone. In other words, they will not match the next date that zone signer told you that you should re-sign your zone by. Note that the KSK key is listed at the top. It is listed as it needs to be changed in about 52 weeks, or one year. And the two zone signing keys have a life expectancy of roughly 13 weeks. We'll cover more details about this in a future tutorial. Finally, the last tool that I will show you today is called Donuts. Donuts lets you examine a zone file to ensure it meets certain criteria. More specifically, it examines each record using a set of rules to check the validity of the data. Most of the rules for donuts exist to check various DNSSEC parameters so that you can be sure that the zone is functional. For example, it checks signature expiration times and DNSSEC signatures themselves for validity. Because this is all done with a completely separate code base than what was used to create the signatures, it will help ensure you that the DNSSEC data is as it should be. The first argument is the file. The second is the zone name, which in this case is the same, but frequently they're different after signing. Note that the errors that it reports is that the zone is not yet signed. I ran the tool on the unsigned copy of the zone file. Now let me run it on the signed copy of the zone file. Now it shows us that all is well with the zone and that there are zero errors. Donuts nicely warns you about signatures nearing expiration time or past expiration. Let's re-sign the zone again.
This time, I've asked Zone Center to use an end time that is an hour and one minute ahead of the signature start time. The signature start time is actually an hour before now, before we, the point where we ran Zone Center. This allows the signatures to be immediately valid everywhere, even in the face of clock inaccuracies between the systems. If we rerun Donuts now, it gives us a nice warning saying that the RR SIGs are nearing its expiration time, and thus it's time to re-sign the zones. Donuts is a useful tool to use to ensure that your current zone is up to date. And if we are waited long enough, that we'll see that the error message will change, indicating that the zones are no longer valid at all. This shows that we're in trouble. We missed the signing window, and we should have re-signed and republished before now. So I'm going to re-sign my zone, this time using an end time of plus one month from now. And if we recheck the zone file with donuts, we'll find that all is well again. As you have seen, getting started with DNSSEC for your domain name is actually quite easy. The zone signer component of the DNSSEC tool suite makes signing your zone extremely simple. Two additional tools, LSDNSSEC and Donuts, were shown that may be helpful in your zone maintenance operations. Look for future tutorials on more of the DNSSEC tools components. When working with DNSSEC, make sure that you remember one important step. You need to re-sign your zone on a regular basis. Look for future tutorials where I'll talk about some other important aspects of DNSSEC. I'll discuss some of our other zone maintenance tools that I didn't have time to go into today. And second, I'll discuss what it takes to get DNSSEC validation running on the client side, along with tools for checking and troubleshooting both DNS and DNSSEC. Look for these and other videos in the future. Hopefully this video has been helpful to get you started deploying DNSSEC.